what's up everyone welcome back to the channel my name is Gregory Green and I am here to talk to you today about camera exposure now if you're a beginner you won't really understand what it is but as an intermediate or more professional photographer you will so this is more geared to beginners all right so what is exposure now exposure can be defined as how bright or underexposed or in this case dark your image turns out let's say you have a camera it's the amount of light that goes through your camera lens and hits that sensor to tell it how much light it needs to light the image now it's very important to get the correct exposure because you don't want to be taking your images and if you don't understand your settings when you get home they're super dark and then you're gonna be forced to put them in Lightroom and try to get the correct exposure and sometimes that is not even possible because of how dark they are on the other hand if you are overexposed they're gonna be what we call blown out that means it's so bright you can't even make out anything in the photo so to get the correct exposure we have in photography what we call the exposure triangle and the exposure triangle is basically three elements that you can control when you're in manual to get the correct exposure now we're gonna go through each of these elements and then I'll tell you how it will affect your image whether you whether you go too low or too high with your with your dial or your value So the first element we have to talk about is ISO. And ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. And each camera is different when it comes to ISO. Some, I have a Canon 7D, and the highest ISO I can get from it, it's like 6400. That actually helps a lot. Other cameras will allow you to adjust from values from 100 all the way up to 22,000. And so be sure to check with your camera to see what ISO values you can work with. Obviously, the newer cameras will have higher ISO values and they can take great pictures in low light at higher ISO values. The problem with ISO is that the higher you go, your image quality tends to decrease. And when I say decrease, it means that you start to get grains in your images. Now, you might not see the grains on at face value but let's say you want to crop in and get closer you know you, you will then start to see a little bit more grain compared to if you were at a hundred which is a perfect ISO that's where you always want to be at a hundred but then if depending on the environment you you try to go up in your value you will be seeing a little bit of grain in your image The second thing is aperture. Now aperture or f-stop number on your camera refers to the opening in your lens that lets in the light so you can get a great exposure or underexposed image. Now when I, when I first started I got so confused with f-stops and aperture because apparently when you go to the lowest f-stop number on your camera or lens you are letting in the most light that your lens can accommodate and vice versa if you go to the highest number you're going to be letting in the least amount of light so some cameras range from 1.2 um, I think that's the lowest I've seen um, you can leave a comment below the video to let me know if there's something lower now why is it important so aperture actually controls your depth of field let's say you're at a you're using a f2 lens you will be able to get great depth of field meaning you'll get the blurry background if you're taking an image as you go higher you are getting more things in focus and you will be able to capture a whole image rather than just a narrow depth of field the other good thing about aperture is that you will be able to drop your aperture to a f2 or less 
to let in as much light. So take for example the kit lens that came with the Canon M50 that I'm filming on now. The kit lens does not go as low as f2. I think it starts from like 3.5 or something. Now if you were to take that lens or use that lens to take a image or a photo at say sometime in the evening you will get better results using an f2 lens rather than a kit lens that does not go as low so it lets in more light and is able to capture images a lot brighter at its lowest f-stop number okay so we're on to the third element and that is shutter speed now shutter speed is is exactly what it's uh, it sounds like it's the speed at which the shutter opens and closes and it is normally measured in a fraction of a second such as 1 60th of a second or 1 1000th of a second which is typically fast enough to freeze your subject in time now shutter speed affects your photo in a way that if it is too slow you will let in as much light as possible now the caveat is it tends to leave you with a blurry image if you're not careful the reason is your shutter is left open for a longer time say 1 60th of a second now when it's open it, le it gives room for your subject to move giving you a blurry image now there are times when long exposure or using a slower shutter speed is required or is preferred and two examples of this is when taking an image of a waterfall and you want it to be the, the water to be silky smooth or getting a creative shot of a speeding train so you get that blurry background not blurry background so you get that blur of the train passing by while your subject stands in front of it standing still right so those are just two examples now when you put all three elements together iso aperture and shutter speed you get your exposure triangle so let's take a look at two different type of photographers portrait photographer and a sports photographer first of all if you're a for if you're a portrait photographer the most important element that you will start out with in my experience is your iso because you want to have a clean image the second element would be your aperture to control your depth of field and also light and then your shutter speed which would also control your light that's coming in and how fast you need to close the shutter to freeze your subject in time so you'll get less blur right sports photographer on the other hand his most important setting will be his shutter speed because he wants to freeze his subject in time and get that dramatic image the next thing he will probably consider is his aperture which is going to let in as much light as he can to get that subject and the third thing he will consider is his ISO to control how much light or how bright or dark he wants his subject to be now all these settings will typically depend on the type of lens you own every lens is different and every camera is different so no the first thing I would urge you to do whatever camera you have whether there's a Nikon Fuji Sony Canon know your camera back and front know what your camera your camera is capable of and what you know and what type of images you want to capture at the time plan plan um, I was listening to a podcast once and it's, I think it was called the beginner but beginner photographer or beginner photography beginner photography and I remember one episode that I was listening to and it said that make sure you get capture the moment make sure you capture the moment sometimes we're so caught up in settings and gear and what we're gonna how we're gonna capture it but then you miss out on so much but to close I leave you with this you can shoot manual, but if you want to take control of your camera and get some really truly creative shots, learn manual. You can even start with the semi-manual settings like AV and the time value settings 
like that's on a, a Canon and there are I think they're different on Nikon and Sony but aperture value and time value which you know those are semi auto or semi manual options and you can start off there and learn it but once you master manual it's truly a really good skill to have under your belt to get some really creative shots always remember know your camera practice makes perfect so go out there shoot some amazing photos and don't be afraid feel forward you know adjust it look at your image what did you do wrong and just take up your camera start practicing shoot images of your family my family is tired of me and shoot images of your cat your dog your pet whatever but practice you know what i mean and once you start to get better then you're going to have some momentum and then you're going to get excited and then you're going to start wanting to get people to pay you <laughs> Keep trying, keep practicing and get better and take some amazing photos. My name is Gregory. Smash that like button if you like the video. S subscribe for more content. Catch you later. Peace.